Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Tomasz Blicharski. I'm a Chief Financial and Development Officer of Jabka, the largest uh, European convenience retailer. And today I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, the company and our approach to data. My presentation is titled Data Driven Company. So let's get on with it. But before we get into data, let's start with what Jabka is. I mentioned that it's the largest uh, convenience retailer in Europe by number of stores. We operate more than six and a half thousand stores. All of them are in Poland. We have more than 5,000 franchisees. More than uh, 12 million of uh, Polish customers uh, live or work near to our stores. And we have more than uh, 870 million visits per year. That is 2.4 million visits of customers every day. And uh, while uh, for Polish standards, we are a sizable company, uh, and uh, we have had uh, many, plenty of data from the customer visits from the, our operations. Uh, for many years, uh, we have actually not been taking full advantage of these data. And as famous uh, saying now goes, data is the new oil. So we thought, how can we take more uh, from the data? How can we make a, take advantage of the data to the extent that uh, we haven't before? Uh, in a common sense, uh, we can say, how can we drill more uh, from the data that we uh, we have? And that was uh, already a few years ago, and we uh, actually uh, designed a plan on how to take uh, advantage of the data. And that plan can uh, be described in four different uh, uh, elements, components. So first, we uh, created a value creation plan. Uh, and we have actually, between the us top uh, management team of Jabka, we have said that uh, taking advantage of data, using the data, uh, is actually one of the top key, uh, priorities of the company. We created the buy-in for the top management. Secondly, uh, we have created the proper organizational structure to actually take advantage of the data. And so we have changed the, uh, the way our organization works. Thirdly, we have invested in technological stack, effectively uh, in software and hardware, mostly software, to uh, effectively be able to uh, drill the data more efficiently. And fourthly, uh, through the use cases that we have uh, introduced and successfully implemented in the company, we have created the uh, buy-in from the entire organization. In the presentation today, I'm going to give you uh, I'm going to drill, drill down into all four of these uh, elements, components, as well as I'll, I'll, I'll share more about the use cases that we have uh, successfully implemented over the last few years. So starting with the, uh, with the master plan, with the, as we call it, value creation plan, uh, we have effectively created uh, three pillars initially. Uh, that uh, on, on which we're gonna uh, we, we try to build the, the 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 our company and the strategy of our company. One was the expansion of the network, and uh, you have to know that uh, we open roughly 1,000 new stores every year, so we're a very dynamic company. Secondly, was uh, effectively embracing uh, what we call modern convenience, so effectively remodeling all the existing stores into the new store format. And uh, it took us three years to remodel 5,000 stores. That in itself was the largest remodeling program in Europe of the last few years. And uh, also changing the assortment of the stores uh, towards the modern convenience. And thirdly, the third element, uh, which is relevant for today's presentation, was uh, embracing digital transformation. That was already back in 2016, 2017. And the stuff I'm going to be showing to you today actually relates mostly to that period of time. Uh, since then, we have made many changes, but that, that what I'm going to say is still holds true. So moving to uh, to the um, creation of the plan and uh, and effectively uh, what to do first within digital transformation, we have uh, first created a map of all potential areas where data can make a difference. And uh, as you see, there is in in the many different areas of the company, there's in a company like retail, there's plenty of uh, areas where where actually data can make a significant difference. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of that, but what is important is that with from all these you know 30 or so plus others that are not shown here, 
potential cases to use the data, we have uh, uh, thought very hard initially which cases, use cases to choose, to prioritize, to effectively be successful uh, in our journey. And we have used, uh, we have selected initially three first cases, the pricing, optimization of pricing using the data, optimization of uh, assortment in the store using the data, and location, so the effectively the way we choose the location, select the new store location by using the data. These are three uh, areas which are, on one hand, fairly basic if you compare them to some other uh, potential cases, but on the other hand, uh, they are also fundamental to our core business. And even small, relatively uh, insignificant change in any of these areas can make a significant impact on our on our business and effectively the bottom line. Uh, moving on to the second component, the organizational structure. We have made a significant change to the, to the way we run our org, uh, organization in order to promote the strategic plan. We have separated from the traditional IT two, uh, two different units, advanced analytics and digital, which were tasked uh, with the transformation. Now, after a few years, uh, headcount of these units uh, amounts to more than 10% of uh, all FTEs in our headquarters. Finally, in terms of technological stack, uh, over the years we have, we have effectively had to redo everything that we had in our technology in order to be effectively be able to, to, to do the transformation. And uh, we have made uh, many significant changes. We have moved to cloud, we have uh, tested several different technologies, but for the moment, uh, and uh, this is obviously very simplified, uh, very simplified, we use three separate uh, key components of our technological stack to uh, enhance our data. Uh, this is uh, obviously Snowflake as a main uh, data platform. This is Synrise as, as our uh, customer data platform. And uh, obviously all of that runs under, under cloud. Now, maybe more interestingly, moving on to the use cases themselves. So what we have achieved uh, with the use of data. And the, these three initial use cases, bear in mind that what I'm showing here, what I'm showing here is, is actually stuff that we did back in 2017 and early 18. So uh, effectively stuff that, what, what, uh, stuff that we started with. So first one that I mentioned, pricing. We have six and a half thousand stores. Historically, we used different price lists for the stores. And actually we even used the data to do the, uh, to, to differentiate the price list. But we, what we have done over the last uh, several years is actually we moved all of that into machine learning models. So effectively we have uh, used the algorithms to determine certain parameters certain key KPIs and certain ways that we price. Uh, that enabled us to be much more granular and uh, create not only separate price lists depending on the store cluster, but also uh, depending on the, um, effectively on the uh, assortment type. So we use, we, have, we had to effectively digest more than two and a half, uh, two, two terabytes of data. And we have analyzed two and a half thousand different features that determine the, let's say, price elasticities. And uh, we created models that uh, made all these changes possible. The implication of all these changes uh, was significant business impact on our top line. So increased, we increased our like-for-like -like sales uh, as well as our margin. Uh, and that contributed to 10% EBITDA uplift that we achieved. That was the first use case that we did. And uh, through this use case, we created a buy-in from the entire organization. So the people uh, within the company started believing that uh, using the data in day-to-day -day business and making decisions based on the data, not on a gut feel, is something that actually can significantly enhance the, uh, the value of our firm. That was the first case that we did. And soon after we, we moved to next ones, uh, which was adjacent a little bit. So using 
the same algorithms, same models, same features, same data, underlying data around the stores and from our company. Uh, we have actually created, um, I'd say, similar algorithms, but uh, focused on differentiating the assortment between the stores. Um, our stores uh, are tiny and there is not many, not much space uh, in them. Uh, we only can carry around 2,000 to 3,000 uh, products, different products, SKUs at the, at the time. So the space is very valuable. Uh, if we could differentiate the products more depending on the customer types that leave or work around these stores, we can virtually effectively increase the size of the store. And this is what we did. We effectively said, okay, through the data, what kind of customers shop uh, in the particular store type. And uh, we have adjusted the assortment based on these customer needs. We can say what we did is we have enhanced the space through the use of data and we created additional uh, competitive advantage. Furthermore, a third use case, I mentioned that uh, we're a dynamic company. We still open uh, hundreds of stores actually this year is going to be the first year in our history that we're going to reach 1000 new stores in a year and uh, therefore uh, expansion is one of the key elements of our business historically the way we did expansion is we 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 use gut feel so the field uh, expansion people were uh, going uh, to check the location they see they counted even historically uh, by using uh, um, just a pen and paper, number of people that, it that is passing ahead in front of the potential store, the number of uh, inhabitants uh, that leave very close to the store or potential store. And uh, they uh, effectively estimated the sales or the potential sales and potential margin that this uh, new store can generate using traditional methods. That led to, uh, I would say, two things. First, they had to spend quite significant amount of time ahead of this new location. And secondly, uh, to biases, so to human biases, so they could effectively be wrong. Now, using the data, uh, and we had data from more than 5,000 stores at the time, uh, and uh, as well as external data from you know 100 different data sources for every single store, including the, the traffic of people that are passing in, in front of the store, we were able to create uh, models, algorithms, which are making estimates of how this store can perform. And we achieved two very significant milestones within that. So firstly, uh, we have uh, saved a lot of time for these expansion people. So they don't need to do all this manual work by themselves. They can effectively just discuss uh, with, with the landlord or potential landlord the terms and all of that, let's say, work is now done automatically. Uh, secondly, uh, we were able to increase significantly the quality of the stores that we're opening because we take into uh, account much more uh, additional data that uh, humans couldn't. Uh, and secondly, we removed the bias. Therefore, we were able to accelerate our expansion with the same number of people by roughly 40%. And at the same time, reduce the number of missed locations, so the, the, the mistakes that we made, by roughly 70%. Uh, that was a huge uh, uh, huge step for that company. And, and also that contributed a lot to the uh, increased number of stores that we now can open. And as I mentioned, this year is the first one where we're going to be able to open 1,000. Uh, all these cases, uh, these three that we actually uh, started working on, uh, back in 2016 and 17, uh, created a very solid fundament for our uh, new approach. And as I mentioned, the data-driven company approach. So since that, we have introduced many new cases. We have effectively uh, changed the way we uh, make a decision in the company using the data. And uh, I can say now that uh, we use machine learning in almost all areas of our company. Uh, and uh, we contributed greatly to the success that we, uh, that we have achieved the last few years. But now there, there's time actually to, 
for, for the next step in the development in, of this area of our company. And what we have uh, effectively done, and I'm, so we created uh, advanced customer insight tool. Uh, what is uh, advanced customer insight tool? Is a web portal whereby a supplier uh, can have access to, uh, and this portal uh, consists of selected relevant data uh, presented in a neat way, uh, which enables the supplier uh, to take advantage of the data and act on this data. This portal is based on Snowflake, uh, and uh, Snowflake actually enables the uh, the creation of this this portal. What are the key effectively features of that uh, of that portal? So it's a connection between Jabka, so us as a retailer, our suppliers, and the consumer. The data that uh, that uh, we uh, included in the in the in ACID includes the sales data of depending on the region, depending on the situation of behavior of the customer within the app. And obviously this is anonymized and uh, based on the uh, all the GDPR rules. Uh, inclu includes effectiveness of the promotions that the suppliers uh, uh, perform within uh, our chain and uh, creates certain insights for the suppliers on how can they manage their business better uh, and how can we together can do this business better between us and the, and the suppliers. So there is a portal, there is a machine learning based insights, and also uh, there is a separate advisory team which uh, helps the suppliers to take advantage of the data. We have the, as a customers, we have the largest FMCG CPG companies globally, and uh, they shared with us certain benefits uh, that uh, they take from the uh, from asset. So firstly, they're able to increase the sales. Uh, secondly, they're able to optimize promotions. Uh, thirdly, we're now working on it actually to personalize communication with consumers through that portal. So the suppliers will be able to connect with the certain customer groups. Uh, fourthly, uh, we're gonna give the suppliers uh, or partners the uh, tool to effectively extrapolate certain uh, market trends, um, effectively for you know their entire business, not only with us. And fifthly, and I think maybe more most, uh, most importantly, uh, that tool gave us a possibility to create a real win-win uh, cooperation with the suppliers. So effectively, uh, we are able to work shoulder uh, to shoulder with them to jointly uh, create a better business. That is a, a huge step for us. So if I had to recap the whole uh, journey that we took from the situation of five years ago where we had a lot of data, but really we didn't take advantage of it. We created technology and use cases to extract a lot of value from the data. And now this year we have moved uh, to effectively from using the data ourselves to sharing the data with our partners to create a better business together. That was a fantastic journey that uh, we went on. And uh, most importantly, we not only changed the way we, you know, our technology works as a company, but most importantly, we changed uh, as a business, as a pe bus uh, as a managers, we changed the way we do, uh, we make our decisions. Thank you for today. It was a pleasure. Be, be here with you, and uh, I wish you all the all the best.